Well, hello everyone and welcome to the second part of the Career Center's workshop series with the Office of Sustainability at College of Charleston. Um, in our first workshop, we covered the job search process as well as resume and cover letter writing tips. If you missed part one, there should be a recording available soon, if not already. Um, and then today we will be talking about how to network using online platforms such as LinkedIn and Handshake. So um, while online networking has been important for years, it's even more crucial now, um, now that in-person networking is not as viable an option due to COVID-19. Before we dive into the topic, let's introduce ourselves for any of you who are unable to attend part one of this series. My name is Emma Waugh and I am the Associate Director for Career Education in the College of Charleston Career Center. I've been at CFC for three years and have worked in career services since 2012. Hi, I'm Jen Wells. I'm the Assistant Director for Career Education and I've been at the College of Charleston since this past January 2020. Um, but I've been working in higher education and predominantly in career services for about 25 years. Hi, my name is Camille Hamrick and I'm a career counselor. Um, I've been working in various higher education settings since graduating college, but I've been in career services for almost two years. And I joined CFC's Career Center this past September. Great, so here's what we're going to talk about in today's workshop and what we hope you will take away from this presentation. First, you will learn the many benefits of having a strong LinkedIn presence. We will walk you through the different components of the LinkedIn profile and how to make it as optimized as possible. You will learn strategies for making valuable connections on LinkedIn, as well as some advanced LinkedIn hacks. And we will also cover the ways you can use the Handshake platform to build your network as well. If you have questions throughout the presentation, please just type them into the chat box and we will address them during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. So why should you be on LinkedIn? Um, over the next four slides, we will share four main reasons to maintain an active LinkedIn account. And later in the presentation, we will show you a LinkedIn account to learn about a few features the platform offers. Visit the Career Center website under the networking tab to find additional information about LinkedIn. Among the many benefits, LinkedIn provides a goldmine of information about different career paths. You can follow groups and organizations of interest to learn more about them and the types of jobs they typically offer. As you build your network, you can view the profiles of other students, alumni, and professionals in the field of interest to you and discover the various paths you can take through education, experiential learning, and employment to achieve your career goals. Second, LinkedIn offers the easiest way to stay in touch with and grow your network. You can search by people, employer, groups, and more. And once you make connections with people, follow organizations, or join groups, LinkedIn will make recommendations for you to expand your connections. You may start conversations or add to existing ones, as well as message individuals to stay in touch. And third, LinkedIn allows you to not only find jobs of interest, but also be found by recruiters seeking to fill open positions. Search for an employer to see the jobs they've posted or search for jobs by industry, location, title, experience level, and more. Employers seeking to fill positions can post jobs in LinkedIn and search for potential candidates through keywords used in profiles, as well as see who is following their organization. And finally, by developing a solid LinkedIn profile, you can expect to double the number of employers who will contact you. As mentioned in the previous slide, employers who have jobs to fill can post jobs, but they can actively look for potential candidates in LinkedIn. The more information you share about your skills, experience, education, and career goals in your profile, the more likely an employer will be able to find and connect with you. All right, so now that we've talked about all the reasons why you should be on LinkedIn, let's talk about how to get started. So it all begins with creating a strong profile that not only represents you well, but that allows 
uh, recruiters to easily find you. LinkedIn offers an interface for recruiters that allows them to search for potential candidates that may be a good match for their positions. If you'd like to be found by recruiters, you have the option to select the setting that indicates to recruiters that you are open to work. However, there are literally millions of profiles on LinkedIn, so it's important to know how to craft your profile in a way that will catch the attention of recruiters. Just like a resume, it all comes down to using keywords. If you're hoping to be found by recruiters in your field, plug industry keywords and phrases all throughout your profile, not just in the experience section. So include them in your headline and your summary as well. Even if you're not trying to be found by recruiters, maybe you just want to have a LinkedIn account right now to make connections with people, including these keywords can help you make connections with other LinkedIn users more easily. So let's take a look at how you might craft your headline with this in mind. So usually people use the headline portion of the profile to add their job title, which is appropriate, but we would encourage you to not stop there. Use this as an opportunity not just to tell people your title, but to briefly note your strengths and what you aspire to be using keywords. So let's look at these examples on the screen. In the first example, we see a headline that is focused on what this individual is currently doing, as well as what they did in the past. So we see that they studied biology, they are currently a wetland specialist, and as a part of their role, they get to research, educate the public, and advocate for wetland preservation. So this gives us so much more insight on this individual and their expertise, rather than if they had simply listed their job title only. This also allows this individual to include more keywords to either catch the attention of recruiters if they happen to be looking for a new job or to connect with other professionals in this type of field. So you may find yourself using a past and present focused headline if you are in an internship or job that aligns with your career goals, but you may use a future focused headline instead. So this allows you to express what you seek to do. As you can see in this example, this individual immediately begins by writing out that they are aspiring to become a sustainability specialist. Although they do not currently hold this title, it does allow them to incorporate these keywords and inform recruiters about what field they hope to pursue. Um, they indicate in their headline that they are still in college, but they're about to graduate, and we see that they do have some degree of experience that has prepared them to enter into the field that they're seeking. This conveys more information and incorporates more keywords than if they had just listed that they are a student at CFC. It's also really helpful to use this type of headline if you're aspiring to go into a certain field that doesn't necessarily directly align with your major. So let's talk about the LinkedIn photo. Having a strong photo makes it 14 times more likely that people will click on your profile. People like connecting with people, not just a profile. So it's best to use a headshot where your face is clearly visible and they don't have to squint to try to pick you out in the photo. Even if you don't have a headshot that was um, taken professionally, be sure to um, have a photo that displays not only you with other people, maybe they're cropped out, um, but make sure that you're presenting yourself professionally and it's just you in the photo. As we mentioned before, you can select to let recruiters know that you're open to work. Since there have been so many difficulties with finding jobs and losing jobs since COVID started, there is now an option for you to also indicate to everyone on LinkedIn that you're open to work. However, this will automatically add a green banner to your profile picture that will say hashtag open to work. We recommend that you avoid selecting this option because employers should select you based on your qualifications rather than the simple fact that you're open to new opportunities. A few years ago, there was a study that indicated that approximately 87% of LinkedIn users are seeking jobs, and I wouldn't be surprised if that number has risen since, especially considering everything that's happening now. So that means that a lot of other people are also simply available for work and looking for work. So let your profile itself showcase your abilities rather than simply selecting a banner to indicate that you are available. So next, let's talk about the summary section of your LinkedIn profile. 
this section is the perfect place for you to tell the story of who you are and also pack in those relevant keywords. This should go beyond just a summary of what's already on your resume or the experience section of your LinkedIn profile. Here you can get a little bit more creative in how you describe yourself. So take a look at this example. This person's summary is written in more of a narrative style. They talk about what drives them, what inspires them, what they enjoy doing, not just having to do with their career, and also what some of their key skills are. So if you just take a moment to read through this, you'll see it's much more engaging to read than just a dry chronological list of job titles or simply a list of skills. Keywords are a common theme when talking about LinkedIn, as you probably noticed already, because these words are how you can get discovered in a LinkedIn search. It's also something you will wanna think about when creating and tailoring your resume. But the question is, how do you know which keywords to include? So we actually have a pretty neat website called jobscan.co, which does the guesswork for you. So with this tool, you're able to copy and paste your LinkedIn profile and then copy and paste a job description, and it will tell you how close of a match you are for that job. So let's take a quick look at JobScan just to see how it works. So this is going to show you a sample. Um, so as you can see, you can paste your resume or your LinkedIn profile in one side and then copy and paste whatever job description you're interested in on the right side. And then it's going to scan both and it will suggest um, certain things you could do to make your uh, either your profile or your resume a little bit stronger, maybe some skills that you should include, um, keywords, etc. cetera. Um, so this is something we definitely recommend doing each time you find a job to apply for, just to make sure that your resume and then also your LinkedIn profile is going to be seen as a good fit. So next, the experience section on your LinkedIn profile should feature the work experience that you would list on your resume. Um, but we encourage you to think beyond just paid work because experience can include internships, community service, volunteering, leadership, or involvement in student organizations, and even projects that you completed in your classes or on your own. So again, keeping keywords in mind, each experience should include a detailed list of bullet points that describe your skills and accomplishments from each position. Whereas a resume might be more limited in space, the good thing about your LinkedIn profile is that it can go more in depth and include more experiences from different areas of interest. As you job search, it's important to keep in mind that only 20% of jobs are actually posted online, which means that 80% of the jobs are never pub publish published po publicly. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you access the other 80% of jobs? Um, you do so by networking, which is a means for cultivating productive relationships for employment or business. You've probably heard that it's who you know that helps you land a job. And more importantly, it's how you're known to the people in your network that will help open doors to opportunities. So keep those in your network well informed of your career goals and the steps that you're taking toward them so that as opportunities arise, they may help connect you to the people, companies, and jobs of interest. There's a process to building your network in LinkedIn. First, find people you already know, such as friends, family, classmates, faculty, supervisors, coworkers, friends of your parents and teammates, and connect with them. From there, you'll begin to receive suggestions from LinkedIn about others you may wish to connect with and add to your network. These are the people who are already connected to the family, friends, and others that are now in your LinkedIn network, and they're known as second degree connections. You may either connect directly with these individuals or your common contact could make an introduction for you. Next, use the alumni search. 
feature in LinkedIn to connect with alumni from CFC. Let's go to the link LinkedIn to try out the alumni search. So in the search box at the top, type College of Charleston. And as you'll see, there's a lot of options. So select the one that says school beside it. Every college has its own page. And you'll see that there are over 59,000 CFC alumni on LinkedIn. On the left navigation bar, go to alumni. And you can search for alumni by location, title, company, or keyword. And once you find someone you're interested in learning more about, click on their name to view their profile to help determine if you'd like to invite them to connect. Um, since the person who is viewing their profile can see, uh, can see with, that you're doing this, we won't do it right now, but we'll show you the steps on connecting with them. And just keep in mind, it is a good thing that they can see you viewing the profile because it may intrigue them to invite you to connect with them. So click connect. And as you'll see, you have the option to just simply click done and send your invitation. However, it is highly recommended and far more professional if you add a note because you want to provide a brief introduction about yourself and why you would like to connect. If the person is a second party connection to someone in your network, include something about how the two of you know each other, or if your contact suggested that you contact this person, then tell them about it. You may also build your network by joining groups associated with career fields, professionals, and alumni organizations, or more within LinkedIn. So place your cursor back in the search box and you can select groups to view that are on the platform or you can type in the name of an organization associated with a group you'd like to join. Um, let's, let's go ahead and type in College of Charleston again. And this time we wanna select the one that says CFC Alumni Group. And if you're not already a member, you'll see the request to join box. And you can click that for the owner to review your request. And in the meantime, you can read the overview of the organization, the group's organization to learn about the group's purpose. And as a student, you are welcome to join the CFC alumni group, even though you're not an alumnus yet. Um, this allows you to start connecting with alumni for advice, reading their news feeds that are shared, joining in conversations or starting in on your own conversations. And we mentioned this in the previous slide when demonstrating how to use the connect feature in LinkedIn, but it's important to restate. Um, when you do connect with someone on LinkedIn, you have the option to simply click a box and connect. And when you do this with someone on LinkedIn, you have the option to, when you do this, um, it's not the best way to make a first impression, especially with someone you don't know. So it's highly recommended that you include a personalized message when you send the invitation. And doing so will increase the likelihood that the recipient will accept your invitation. So as you seek to build connections that could possibly lead to opportunities, think like a recruiter. So what would you want to see from a potential candidate on LinkedIn? Of course, it does start with privately indicating to recruiters that you are open to new opportunities and then being engaged. So don't just simply create a profile and leave it at that, use it. Follow companies in your desired industry and interact with their posts by either liking the post, reposting, or providing helpful comments. You can also connect with individuals within those companies by sending personalized messages like Jen had discussed. An engaged candidate will stand out to the employer. Other ways to actively seek out opportunities include searching for recruiters. So just as recruiters can search for individuals who have indicated that they are open to work, you can search for individuals who have indicated that they are recruiters. So simply type into the search bar, title colon recruiter, and you can check out who all is actively recruiting. Go ahead and connect with them. You can also type I'm hiring into the search bar and it will pull up anyone who has indicated this in their headline. If you'd like to get the attention of employers that you're interested in, view their personal profile. 
as Jen had mentioned, they'll be able to see that you have viewed their profile, and then it's possible that they could view yours as well. And if you have received a notification that they have viewed your profile, this could possibly open the door for you to initiate a conversation with them. As you are searching for connections, know that you can add filters to your search. One helpful tool is the current and past companies filter. If you wanted to find someone who currently works at a place of interest or has previously worked there, you can add this filter. You can also add a filter for the connection degree so that you're getting the results of individuals you may more easily connect with. So let me go on and show you guys where you can find those filters because you do kind of have to dig just a little bit. So whenever you are in the search bar, if you just click there, um, go on and choose people because you're likely trying to connect with people, although you can choose groups or something along those lines. Then at the top here, you'll see all filters. And if you click on that, um, you can see the connections like we had talked about. You can choose location. And as we had mentioned, you have the current companies and past companies here. Um, so as you can see, mine are focused on higher education because of my background. But let's say if I were interested in moving to a certain company, I could easily add that company in there and search through people um, in that manner. All right, so there's definitely a lot to cover about LinkedIn and it is, it's our top platform recommendation when it comes to networking online. Um, if you do have questions about LinkedIn, definitely leave them in the chat and we'll address them at the end. But right now we're gonna move into talking about how to network in Handshake. Um, so if you don't already know about Handshake, it's the job search platform that the Career Center manages at CFC. Um, and the great thing about it is that every College of Charleston student has a Handshake account. Um, and this platform is where employers can post jobs directly to the College of Charleston. Additionally, many other colleges and universities use Handshake with their students too, over a thousand institutions in fact. Because you have a Handshake account, you have access to connecting with students from other colleges who use Handshake. Plus, there are ways to interact with the employers who post their opportunities in Handshake as well. First, let's talk about the Handshake community. This part of the platform is all about students connecting with other students and alumni. So let's go to Handshake and take a look. Great, so if you want to participate in the community and connect with other students, you will need to make your uh, account public to other students first. Keep in mind that you can switch back to private at any point. When you're looking through the community page, you can check a box over on the left that will show you alumni only. So this is helpful if you're looking more for somebody who's been in the workforce for a few years to connect with. You're also able to search by major, which could be helpful in giving you some ideas about what others in your same major have done for their internships or jobs. You can also search by specific employers if you have a certain organization in mind that you want to work for and you're looking for a contact who could refer you or just provide insight about that employer. If you do come across a student or alumni in the community page that you want to contact, you're able to send them a message through Handshake. When you click the message button, it will provide you with some uh, templates. First, it's going to ask you to agree to some guidelines. So let's go ahead and just check those. So then it's going to give you these options for message templates but we highly recommend writing one from scratch. So if you do click on one of these, it should give you that option. So at the very bottom, it says you can clear all and write your own message. This is probably what I would recommend, just because you don't want it to come across sounding like 
it was pre-written for you. You want to really personalize this message just like you would when messaging somebody on LinkedIn because you want to make an authentic connection. So Handshake also provides users the opportunity to ask a question and have it answered by other users. These questions can be more general about a certain career field, or it might be more specific to a particular position at a company. As you search for jobs and decide where you might wanna work, you can gain valuable insight into certain fields, industries, even specific employers by asking a question on Handshake. So let's go back over to Handshake where you can see the Q&A feature. So we can see some of the questions that have already been answered. And even if you don't ask your own question, you can see all of the questions that have already been asked and answered and still learn a ton of useful information. Furthermore, you have the option of messaging someone for more information about an answer they provided in the Q&A. So if you do this, we, have, we would just recommend the same thing, um, you know, write your own personalized message to this person. And I would also encourage you, if it makes sense, to answer questions that have been asked on Handshake Q&A. So for example, someone may have asked what it is like to intern for Disney. If you have personally done that internship, you have valuable insight that you can share with that person. And this is what we like to call networking karma. So you want to provide as much value as you receive during the networking process. Plus, if you publicly answer this question, other people will be able to see your information and they might message you about your answer. And this is just a way to keep building your network. So to, to discover and connect with employers in Handshake, there are three steps you can take. So let's go back into Handshake to learn about them. First, click on employers, and you will see that there are over 531,000 employers in the system. To make your search more manageable, use the filters along the left navigation bar. You can search keywords, location, employer size, and industry. Let's search the keyword of sustainability. So now you can see that the list is a bit more manageable, at, but there are still over 400 employers. So to help narrow your search, you can also search by location, industry, anything depending upon your interests. Let's go ahead and take, it the, take a look at one of the listings and just click on the name of the company. And now you can see, you can get an overview of that company. And you'll see in this case, to the right of the overview, there's a link to reviews. Um, as a student, as a student um, who has worked there, they can review the organization and give some tips. Um, also, um, if the student had an interview, they can also provide some information about their interview that they'd like to share. And again, this is the same student provided information for both. And so if you happen to be interested in this organization, the student would probably be a really good contact to message and get to know a little bit more information. Next, you can see um, on the right, the contact information that the company's provided. So you can use it to research or to connect with employers and ask questions to get additional information. And if you scroll down a little bit more, you'll notice if there were any jobs currently posted, you would be able to connect through them here. And if the company had shared any names of staff members, they would appear here as well. And we suggest, you know, if there was a staff member listed here, you might want to try to connect with them through LinkedIn to build upon your network. Now back at the top right, you're going to see the follow button. So let's click it to follow the organization and save it for a favorite. And after doing that, let's go back to the employer page. And under the filters, check the box, employers you follow. Now you'll be able to see all the employers that you follow, including the one we just added. You can easily return here to view your favorites, which makes it a lot easier when you're searching through Handshake instead of having to look through all of the postings and all the employers every time you go in. 
And before we leave the platform, um, let's take a look at the top right where it says messages. I just want to point this out. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about it in the next slide. So some employers, especially if you have a strong profile in Handshake, will contact you through the messages feature to let you know about an upcoming job opportunity or to learn more about you to determine if you're a fit for their organization. So be sure to turn on email and or mobile phone notifications in your account settings in Handshake so that you're, you get a heads up when the employer messages you. And a moment ago, I showed you messages at the top right of your Handshake profile account. If you've been sent any messages from an employer, a red circle with a number of new messages awaiting your response will appear there. So once you click on that messages tab, the red circle will disappear. It's important that you respond promptly to a message from an employer, regardless of whether you're interested in the opportunity presented or the invitation to connect. Um, obviously, it's easier to respond when you're interested, but it's just as important to respond when you're not interested. Doing so demonstrates your professionalism and courtesy to the employer, and in turn, it lets them know that you're respectful of their process to find the best candidates for their opportunities. Plus, while the job or company may not be a fit for you now, it could be the right fit in the future. First impressions are remembered, so don't burn bridges by not responding. So we've covered a lot today, but remember you're not alone in this. Um, our team is always available for you. If you have any questions about your LinkedIn or Handshake profile and how to use these platforms. Um, so again, we've really appreciated the opportunity to talk with you guys today and to provide this presentation. Um, and we want to just take some time to address any of the questions that you have. Um, so we will take this time now um, to address those questions. And I just sent everybody a link. Um, we recently did another handshake workshop that gives you five advantages, five ways to take use it to advantage. And so I just let you know about that. Um, you can access it through Handshake. There's it's a YouTube link directly to it. But if you can't find that that YouTube link, if you forget that or aren't able to copy it now, you can just go log into Handshake under events and you can find access to it. All right, so we have, do you have any tips on how to write a bio on LinkedIn for someone who finds it hard to talk about themselves? Well, that's definitely a good question. And I've, I've gotten that sort of question before when it comes to writing a resume or writing a cover letter when you don't necessarily want to come across as bragging or, you know, full of yourself, basically. Um, and it's true that when we're in school, we kind of learn to take the, the self out of our writing. So it's hard to then switch back into writing about yourself, especially in a way that's trying to promote yourself in some way. Um, so I always like to think about, you know, it's not that you're necessarily bragging about yourself, but you are just informing a potential employer or a potential contact what kind of value you're going to bring to them. So think about the skills that you have, the experience that you have, you know, try to make it very objective in the way that you're describing yourself. Um, things that can be backed up with facts. Um, that way it's, you know, it's more of just an informative description of yourself versus, you know, look how great I am, <laughs> if that makes sense. And it does get easier the more experience you have because you know when you're just graduating college assuming you haven't had like a lot of full-time jobs um, there might not be as much to talk about so you're almost kind of wondering you know what should I even mention in my summary but as you do continue to add experience it's easier to boil all that down into that paragraph or two
What about Handshake? Any questions about Handshake? I'm not sure if you guys have already logged in to search for jobs or if you knew that there was the feature to network. Um, any questions about that? Also, we have a pretty small group, so feel free to just unmute yourself. And if you just wanna ask a question, that's fine too. I have a question. Um, so do we like still have access to the Handshake accounts after we graduate? Yes, okay. you do. Um, yep, so what should happen when you graduate is that your, um, kind of the status of your account will be turned into an alumni account, but you still have the exact same access as a current student would have. Good question. Um, and one thing to mention about the positions that get posted on Handshake, um, we do try to keep them more relevant to, you know, the average college student or the recent college graduate. So we're typically not posting full-time jobs that require more than three years of experience. Because um, I know that can be tricky when you're looking for something that's entry level, but then they're asking for all these years of experience. You're like, well, how does that even make sense? So we try to keep it keep it more of those like first time jobs, entry level jobs um, for you guys when you're searching through the system. And if you see anything that has just a little bit more experience by chance and you're wondering why it's there, we, we also consider our master's level students that are also using the system because they could potentially have the experience. We, we try not to overload by any means because you're our main focus as undergraduates, but if you're wondering, that's that's usually the, the reason behind it. Or sometimes um, we do get a lot of transfer students, and so they could potentially have some experience that the traditional undergraduate may not have. The other thing to keep in mind too with Handshake, if you see an employer that's of interest to you, but they don't have any current postings, reach out to them. You know, we showed you where you can get their contact information. At, at least everyone typically provides their website. And so you can kind of dig around in there on their website to try and find somebody. Um, typically, you know, look in the department that you're interested in, or um, if you can't find someone that way, then reach out to human resources and ask if they can put you in touch with someone. Um, just to find out if there's anything that's coming down the pike that hasn't gotten posted yet and you can use that as an opportunity to tell them a little bit about yourself and what you're looking for but um, an employer always loves to hear that someone is interested in their organization yeah and that can be that can be more successful than you might think i just had a, an appointment last week with a student who said she just reached out directly to somewhere that she wanted to work and they said, well, we don't have anything posted, but we have this job that we're about to post. Um, do you want to apply for it? And then she actually ended up getting the job. So it really can pay off to take initiative and not just limiting yourself to what's currently out there. And that also goes back to what we were talking about with networking and keeping the people in your network informed about what you're looking for, because maybe they come across something um, that you might be interested in, but they wouldn't know about it if you hadn't shared what you're looking for. Yeah. It might seem a little intimidating at first to reach out to uh, individuals on LinkedIn or Handshake, but one thing just to keep in mind is that these platforms are created for digital networking. Um, so don't be afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid to connect or send messages um, because whenever people are interacting with LinkedIn, they kind of expect for that type of interaction to happen. Any other questions before we close out today? Is everybody on LinkedIn? You can just put your hand up. <laughs> See some nods. <laughs> How about Handshake? Is anybody, has anybody not logged on to Handshake yet? Okay. Well, if you, um, if you haven't been on Handshake, we do have a link to it right on our homepage on the Career Center website. 
Um, and you should be able to just log in with your CFC student information. So the same way you would log into My Charleston. I see a note here that one of the students on the call was able to get a part-time job through Handshake. Yay! Yay! That's, that's great. awesome. Yeah, and so part-time jobs, um, internships, and full-time jobs all get posted on there. And that's also where we put information about our events. Um, so I'll just let y'all know um, when the fall starts up, whatever the fall ends up looking like, who knows at this point, but um, we're planning to do virtual career fairs um, and we're gonna be breaking them up based on different career fields, different career areas. Um, so a little bit different than what we had done previously with our big career fairs we did every semester. Um, so just keep an eye on Handshake um, and on our website for more information about when those will be and what the different areas will be. Um, those fairs will actually all be done through the Handshake platform. They've created this virtual fair feature. Um, so that should make it pretty seamless for you guys. And any smaller events we do with employers as well, we'll be posting there too. We do have a evaluation that we would like for you guys to do again. Um, it's similar to the one that you guys completed for us last time. So we will send that in the chat. Um, so you should be able just to click on that link and take that brief um, form for us and just let us know how everything went today. We'd appreciate that. I just put the link in. It's the one that has the word Qualtrics in it. Any closing questions before we close out? All right, well, we have really enjoyed being with you guys today. Um, thank you for allowing us to take some of your time and just interact with you guys. And again, um, if you have any questions about any of the materials that we have covered or any other topics related to planning for the future and your career, um, just let us know and we would be happy to help. Hope you guys have a great afternoon.